Let's try this one. How about that? It, it might matter this morning because I tell you what, the harvest has been absolutely awesome this year, but I've been breathing and spitting bean dust and corn dust all this week. Oh my, and my eyes are itchy, my throat's scratchy. I guess what's new about the throat being scratchy though, right? <laughs> Well, good morning and welcome this morning. It's nice to see your smiling faces here. And this morning, why don't you stand with me as we begin our, our worship service this morning and we are going to sing, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. And I bet you can even use your 10 stringed instruments on this song. Here we go! I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad, not sad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he hath made me glad. He hath made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Well, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice for he hath made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Amen. Don't you just feel him in your spirit this morning? In every step we take, in every breath we take, he's there, isn't he? Well, you may be seated if you can. The next song we're going to do this morning, my goodness, it just seems like I played this song before church started. We gather together to ask the Lord's blessing and to give him thanks. We're entering his courts with thanks. And I thought, what a better song to sing than give thanks with a grateful heart. And it's so cool. You notice the banner over here at the other side of the church? It has give thanks on it. So it's a time of year to give thanks but it should be that every day, shouldn't it? Sing along with, well, I guess you can hum along with me as we sing this morning, Give Thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks. Thanks for everything. 
You help us through such difficult times in life. And out of that, we do give you thanks, Lord. In Jesus' name, we ask that your presence be here to lift up every soul that is watching my TV this morning that is here physically. We love you this morning, Lord. In Jesus' name, we give you thanks and praise. Amen. Thanks for you, Ms. Robin. No. <laughs> I welcome you all this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. It is a pleasure to be here this morning and to see you all out here, and hello to everyone at home. Um, I'm going to give a shout out to my mama, who's not here today. Um, it is truly a beautiful day. This is the day the Lord has made, so uh, I'm very excited that we can rejoice, and we will be glad in it. I do have just a couple of quick announcements I want to um, bring to your attention. One of those, um, we are very blessed, like I said, with Miss Robin when she plays and she sings for us. Um, when Jan plays, she is looking for some people who would be willing to come up here and, and sing and lead us in the songs. So we, we have a sign-up sheet over in Social Hall. So if any of you um, feel like you might be willing to get up here and, and help lead a song, uh, please sign up on the sheet over in Social Hall. Um, I'll let you look at these about the food pantry. And there is a Lydia update in here that's very sad. They're not going to be having their spaghetti dinner this year. But I would just like to say to any Lydia people, if you would like to make a spaghetti dinner and deliver it to my house, um, we would not refuse you. So uh, once again, I want to remind you, um, we are dealing with COVID rules, so we thank you for following the protocol and spacing yourselves out. Um, we strongly recommend masks. We um, unfortunately cannot do any congregational responses or singing. So as I um, go through the liturgy here, I'll just ask you to silently join me in the spots where we do things together. Any other announcements that you would like to bring to the attention to the church? Okay, then um, I would ask you then to join me to end the call to worship. This is taken from Psalms 119, and it's uh, verses 9 through 16. How can young people keep their way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Do not let me stray from your commandments. I treasure your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I declare all the ordinances of your mouth. I delight in the way of your decrees as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. just uh, misplaced my bulletin everyone here it is would you please join me now in prayer father I thank you for your many and precious promises forgive me for the times when I take my eyes off you and slip into unbelief and help me to keep my eyes fixed on Christ and the truth of your word help me to rest in you and trust all the issues of my life into your hands. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And now um, let us join together in our affirmation of faith. And this is the Apostles' Creed taken from page 881 if you'd like to follow along with me. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Our proclamation and response today is taken from, um, this is an, an Old Testament reading that we're going to have today from the book of Isaiah. And this is from uh, chapter 51 and verses 1 through 3. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness and who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were cut and to the quarry from which you were hewn. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who gave you birth. When I called him, he was only one man, and I blessed him and made him many. The Lord will surely comfort Zion and will look with compassion on all her ruins. He will make her deserts like Eden her wastelands like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the sound of singing. And then we're going to go to the book of Revelation. This is from chapter 21, verses 10 through 27. If you want to follow along in the Pew Bible, it's on page 1206. And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with 12 gates and with 12 angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. There were three, three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. The wall of the city had 12 foundations, and on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. The angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city, its gates, and its walls. The city was laid out like a square, as long as it was wide. He measured the city with the rod and found it to be 12,000 stadia in length and as wide and high as, as it is long. The angel measured the wall using human measurement and it was 144 cubits thick. The wall was made of jasper and the city of pure gold as pure as glass. The foundation of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth ruby, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth turquoise, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. The twelve gates were pure pearls each gate made of a single pearl. The great street of the city was of gold, as pure as transparent glass. I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring the splendor into it. On no day will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night there. The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter in, into it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. And now, if you would please stand, if you are able, for the reading from the Gospel, which is from the book of Matthew. And this is from chapter 6, and it's verses 19 through 21. This is when Jesus teaches about money. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermins destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moss and vermins do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
Please be seated. Thank you, Jean. What a gift. What a gift it is to be together. Um, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. There we go. What a gift to be together. Um, grace and peace. Grace and peace. So we have made it now to our uh, time of prayer, which we all love. Uh, it's a praying community, so what a gift we have. Um, I have a handful of different requests from different people, so bear with me as I share with you. From Janet Postian, um, first of all, a great joy that our church blood drive was a success. We met the goal of 20, which means that the preschool will now receive a $250 gift card towards supplies. Um, so that's a wonderful, wonderful gift. Um, also from Janet, she is requesting prayers for healing for Matt, who um, is her and Charlie's grandson. Um, he was hit by a car while walking in a crosswalk at school at Iowa. Um, thankfully, thankfully, he did catch a glimpse of the car as he jumped, which caused him to go on top of the car, hit the windshield, and roll off. He sustained a very badly bruised shoulder, a torn ACL, and fracture in the back of his left knee, um, and a broken toe. So we thank the Lord for being with him um, and causing him to jump because otherwise his injuries could have been much, much worse. Um, so Janet's asking prayers for healing of injuries, relief of pain. Um, she also is requesting prayers for a friend, Rita, who suffered a stroke and is going through physical therapy. So praying for successful phys physical therapy and healing from that stroke. Um, from Larry and Bev, um, Joy, Bev's foot surgery went well, so thank you. Praise the Lord. Uh, thanks for praying for her. Um, and then concerns. One staff member and 10 residents at Davenport Lutheran Home have tested positive for COVID. One of the residents is Bev's mom, Agnes Jensen. Um, so none have been hospitalized, but they're all in isolation. So let's be praying for Agnes and the rest of those um, at Davenport Lutheran Home. Uh, repair request from Denny and Lana Wolf for their daughter, Denise. A small spot was found on her mammogram. Um, so it's so small they can't, they can't tell for sure what it is, so they're gonna, they've decided to do surgery to remove it. Uh, we're praying for successful surgery, good results. Surgery is tomorrow morning, so Monday morning. As you think of their daughter, Denise, please lift her in prayer. Um, Joy from Joyce Hudson um, checked. She was checked at UIHC and no brain issues. So all was clear and there's no follow-up. So praise the Lord for that. Um, and then regarding Bill, he's doing fine. He did stay overnight, but he is doing fine. So let's keep praying for him as, um, in healing for that. And I believe that that's it. So let's pray and see what else the Holy Spirit brings to us. Most gracious God, we come before you in uh, thanksgiving and praise. We come before you knowing that you are good. Oh, you are so good. You created the heavens and the earth and everything in them. You breathed life into us, Lord Jesus. You came to be present with us, Jesus Emmanuel. You broke the curse of sin. And you breathed new life into us through the power of your Holy Spirit, strengthening and walking with us. And all at that same time, as, as we all pray together, you hear prayers across the nation, across the world, all at once. What? A wonderful and amazing God you are who desires relationship and yet is holy and perfect righteous and true Lord and Savior King of Kings the great high priest Lord we thank you for so many things um, specifically today we thank you for 
the blood drive being a success. We thank you, God, for bringing those 20 people. We thank you for the gift that they are offering in return um, for our preschool and the supplies. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for overseeing Bev's foot surgery. We thank you that all went well, and we pray for continued healing for her. Lord, we thank you and praise you for Joyce's good, clear check that there are no issues and she doesn't even need follow-up. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, there are so many things to be grateful for. We thank you for this church. We thank you for this community. We thank you for this space to belong. And more than that, this place where we can encourage one another in our faith journey to be strong followers of you, mature in our faith, ready and prepared at a moment's notice by the power of your spirit to give an answer for what we believe. We thank you, God, that you are with us. Lord, sometimes we need to spend a little more time in thanksgiving. So I'm just going to um, leave a little time here for each individual to pray their own prayers of thanks in their own minds. so good to begin this way because then as we pray we remember what you have already done so we lift up Matt to you um, God we pray in the name of Jesus that you would bring complete healing to him we pray for his shoulder his ACL his the back of his left knee and his broken toe we pray that you would bring healing that you would bring strength and that you would bring peace Lord, we thank you that he saw the car. We thank you that he jumped. We thank you for that response. Lord, we pray for Rita who suffered a stroke and we pray in the name of Jesus that her physical therapy will go well, that you will be upon the mind of that physical therapist as they work together and that you would give her strength where it begins to fail. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus for healing, specifically for Agnes, but also for the rest of the staff and residents at Davenport Lutheran Home and all others who have experienced a diagnosis with COVID-19, who are hospitalized, who are um, at home recovering. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would bring healing. Lord, we pray specifically for Denise as she deals with this small spot as it's removed. We pray in the name of Jesus that that surgery would go well and that it would be completely wiped out. Lord, that there would be no more fear, that you would bring peace that surpasses all understanding and that you would comfort Denise and the rest of her family as well. Give them peace. Give them grace in their conversations with one another. Oh, Lord, we give this to you. Lord, we thank you for successful procedure for Bill, and we pray for continued healing for him as well. Lord, you are good. You are good. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for what you are doing. And sometimes we just want to hide in a little bubble that feels safe, a little cocoon that keeps us cozy. But Lord, the, our culture is turbulent right now, and so we ask that you would bring peace upon, among the nation and among all the nations. We pray for your wisdom as people vote, as they continue to go out, as they send in mail-in ballots. Lord, we pray over each conversation that is had regarding politics. And we claim you, Lord Jesus, as our Lord and as our King. God, 
we ask that you would just lead us in each conversation. And so now we thank you so much for the word that you have given us. And we pray now the prayer that you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Well, each week during this sermon series, I've offered a memory verse. And I'm wondering if anyone remembers what last week's memory verse was. It's a little bit longer. I'll give you a clue. It was in Philippians. <laughs> three, three, eight. And it says, anyone, anyone, anyone? What is more? Yeah, what is more? <laughs> All right, I got it for y'all. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the surpassing knowledge of Jesus Christ, my Lord. For his sake, I've discarded everything else, counting it as garbage, so that I could gain Christ. And a little sneak preview, this week's, you can also find it in your bulletin, is Philippians 3, 13 to 14, also a little longer. I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. I think we can, I think we can, I think we can. Um, Due to COVID, we are not passing the offering plate, so I'm just going to bless it. There's a basket back at the back of the sanctuary as you walk in. And so let's just pray a little blessing over that. Oh, Lord God, we thank you for the gifts you give us that we have an opportunity to give back to you. And we ask, Lord, that you would um, give us wisdom in all that we do with those funds. But, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to give to you. You are good. Bless that, Lord, that it may nourish and flourish your kingdom, making disciples, strengthening disciples, and spreading your gospel. In the powerful name of Jesus, amen. So there was a runner in Oregon. He um, ran for one of the universities in Oregon. And there's a YouTube video about this if you ever want to look it up. And he's getting near the finish line. And he starts hearing people cheer. So he looks over to the crowd and he starts doing this. Cheer, cheer, cheer. And the crowd starts roaring, and he gets really excited because he's like, oh, they're cheering me on, they're cheering me on. And as that's happening, another runner comes right up and passes him just before he gets to the finish line. Paul tells us in the scripture that I'm going to read to you in just a little bit that we are to press on toward the goal. But when we take our eyes off of the finish line, we get a little distracted. It's funny what can take our minds off the finish line. So let's start with this passage. Philippians 3, starting in verse 12, and I'm going to go through 4, verse 1. If you want to read it in your pew Bible, 1140 is your page, 1140. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. All of us who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. 
Join with others in following my example, brothers, and take note of those who live according to the pattern we gave you. For as I have often told you before, and now say again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is their shame. Their mind is on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, that is how you should stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. The word of God. Thanks be to God. What a great gift to have a witness of Christ, such as Paul, as an example for us. So let's just kind of step back a minute and remember where we've come from. Uh, we are in week five of this series on uncommon joy. So week one, we talked about how Paul was in chains, right? How he was in prison, and yet he counted it joy because he acknowledged that Jesus Christ was advancing the gospel even through his present circumstances. He was chained to guards, and he was talking to them, and he was praying with them, and he was praising the Lord. He was sharing the gospel. The next week, we talked about how to live is Christ and to die is gain, right? And what does that really mean but to, to focus on Christ? A very similar message, right? We are to keep our eyes fixed on Christ and, and all of the things that are important should be in the center of Christ. And then the third week, we talked about humility. One of the things we talked about with humility was it's not about thinking less of yourself. It's about thinking of yourself less right, and putting others before us. And then we get to last week. And last week we talked about how everything outside of Christ could be considered garbage, right? If we don't have Christ first, if it's not our foundation, I'm not saying those things are bad, but if it's not our foundation, if we don't have that strengthening us, then what's it worth? So today, today we get to talk about the goal, about running towards the goal, keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus. Maybe you know this passage from Hebrews. I couldn't help myself but throw it in. Hebrews 12, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Very similar, right? Very similar to this Philippians 3 passage that we're talking about today. Let's press on toward the goal. I love, I just love this. Um, I'm not a runner. I've tried to be a runner. I, I um, trained for a 5K once. I did a couch to 5K that was a really great experience. It was good for me. I want to do it again one day. Um, but I'm not a runner. But my friend, Pastor Nick, um, who serves in Sharon UMC, is also doing the sermon series, and he's a runner. And he's actually been a track coach and I believe also a cross-country coach. And so he was telling us as we met this week that if you, if, one of the really hard things for a runner is if they don't get to see the course like for a cross-country course, if you don't get to see the course beforehand, if you don't get to walk it, it's really know how, hard to know how to run it because you don't know how you should pace yourself. When do you push hard? How much do you hold back? Now, we don't get to see the course ahead of us. We don't get to pre-walk that course and figure out where our hills are going to be and where the valleys are going to be. So what we have to do at all times is keep our eyes on Christ because we don't know when temptation is going to come up. We don't know when hardship is going to hit us. And so if we're not holding on to Jesus, if we're not staying in tune with Scripture, if we're not um, surrounding ourselves with fellowship of believers to catch us when we fall and say, mm, come on, we got this, I'm with you, then we might have a really hard time getting up that hill. 
I'm going to have a really hard time. There is so much in this passage that I've had a hard time kind of coming down, right? Like, bring it in, Joy. So um, one of the things I love about what Paul says is forgetting one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. Now, when I first read that, I thought, oh, you've got to forget all your sin. You've got to forget all the things that are holding you back. But as I studied a little more and I, as I talked to my pastor friends a little more, what we really realize is he's talking about all the good things. You need to sometimes forget, not, not in a way that you never remember again, but just not think about all the things that you have accomplished so that you keep chasing that goal. Do you remember the story I told a couple weeks ago about that ping pong shot, right? Like, I was really excited because Weston lobbed me a ball and I was going to slam it and I slammed it and it was really, really great. It was awesome. And I kept thinking about that when he lobbed the next ball and then I missed it. Or our runner from Oregon who's cheering the crowd and he forgot that he was running a race and that he actually had other competitors. I mean, I don't know what went through his mind exactly, but there is a little interview with him afterwards on the YouTube, and he says, yep, I, I won't do that again, right? I'm going to keep my eyes fixed on the goal. Because it's really easy to get distracted. You start looking at your friends around you or what the world is saying, and your eyes are lost. We lose the goal. So what is the goal? What are we really talking about? I believe the goal is eternal fellowship with Jesus Christ. Eternal fellowship with Jesus Christ. And that doesn't start when you die. That starts now or hopefully years ago. But the goal is to maintain that continuous fellowship with Jesus Christ. There's a lot of people that would claim to be practicing Christians that don't hold on to the goal of Jesus Christ all the time. It's really easy to say, well, God's grace has covered me. He promises to forgive. He does. But that doesn't mean that we have an excuse to go out and live however we want to when we're not with our Christian believers, when we're not at church. We don't get to just throw everything we've learned aside and go pretend our life is over here. We don't get to have separate lives. Our Christian life covers everything. Because as we press on toward the goal, Christ is walking with us. The other night we were having a conversation about, um, about growth in Christ. It was with a friend, and I'm not going to get into all the details of it. But Weston made a comment that the closer you get to Christ, the more mature you get in Christ, the more you actually cling to Christ because you've seen what he has done and you trust in him to do more. You recognize that he sets you free. You recognize that he will give you strength to get up that hill. He'll give you strength to do that mud run, to get through that last pool, whatever that might be. He gives you strength to overcome the obstacle, the temptation. Because it, God also promises that no temptation will seize us except for what is common to man. And even those, Christ will give us a way out. Oh, God is so good. He is so good. And so he's with us as we are pressing on toward the goal. So we have accomplishments we have made, and they're great. But the more we think about those accomplishments, the less likely we might be to reach that goal. I also read something about runners, and one of the things about runners is that if you actually focus on a goal, so whatever it might be, maybe it's the next tree that you're trying to get to or the fire hydrant you're trying to run to or the corner that you're trying to get to, you'll actually run faster because there's a goal in mind. And somehow it does something chemically to you and you can actually go faster. 
So if we're continuing to press on toward the goal of Christ Jesus as we focus our eyes on him, we'll actually get there stronger with his support. There's always warnings in scripture. All the way through scripture, he offers, Paul is offering warnings and everyone else is offering warnings. He says, many, I say again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach and their glory is their shame. Their mind is on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven. Um, so when it talks about this, it's just saying basically that, dis- that distraction piece, like let's not get distracted. Right? When it says your God is your stomach, it's not saying just that you're eating too much. It's saying you're following the, the earthly desires, right? The, the things that bring destruction to our flesh. But our citizenship is in heaven. Paul is such an honest man. He talks about how he hasn't arrived yet. I don't, I don't claim to say I've arrived. I'm not there yet. I'm still pressing toward the goal. But follow my example because I'm following Christ. And follow the other's examples of those who are following Christ. Who do you have in your life that you trust their example? Who do you have in your life that you can say, that one will lead me closer to Christ. If I pattern my life in this way, I will get closer to Christ. I encourage you to pray on that and think on that and wrestle with that. Because Paul is calling us always to walk together with others as we press on toward the goal. It's so exciting. I get so excited. Because Jesus is just so good. I had one more thought. I lost it in my little, little excitement here. Hmm. Oh, Jean read all about heaven, right? She read like this beautiful description of what heaven will be like. The new Jerusalem coming down from heaven. Jesus is our light. They didn't need any light because they had the lamb and they had God's light. Trust that light to lead you. Continue to lean into that light of Christ. This is where we find uncommon joy. When we press on toward the goal, when we have people walking beside us, when we're running, running, running. I read an article this week about um, how we spend our time and that 95% of the time we spend, other people could accomplish some of those same goals. But 5% of how we spend our time, only you can do. So what other people can't do for you is other people can't train you in a race, right? Like you have to train, you have to do the work. You have to get up every morning or go every night and train a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Other people can't read scripture for you and put it in your mind. Other people can't pray. I mean, they can pray for you, but they can't build your relationship with God where you are praying with God and listening. Other people can't do that for you. That 5% of our life is really, really important because God wants that relationship with us. And like I said earlier, the closer we get to Christ, the closer we want to get. The more we know, the more we realize we don't know, the more we want to know. 5% of our life only we can do. And that time, soaking in Scripture, I had a professor once Call it wasting time with God. You need to waste time with God. Dr. Steve Seaman said this. Um, And I love it because sometimes I really do feel like I'm wasting time, right? Like I've got so many other things to do. I know this is important, but 
to what end am I reading this today? To what end? Well, the end is to get to know God. The end is to be familiar with God's people's story so that we can know how to live with God in the future and live in fellowship with one another in the future. The end is to grow in relationship with Christ so that we can maintain that relationship for all of time. So those spiritual disciplines are really important. That time at communion with the Lord, vital. That time in fellowship with one another, vital. That time in service that you're doing, you're growing with God as we become servants like Christ. Vital. And these are all things that help us press on toward the goal. As long as we keep our eyes fixed on the goal so that the runners don't sneak up past us because we got distracted by our crowd over here. And then we started doing these things over here. And then we went over here. We get confused sometimes. And we think we're following Christ, but we kind of landed over here. Right? Let's keep our eye on the goal. Will you pray with me? Most holy and gracious God, we thank you that you have given us everything we need. You've given us everything we need. Strength and endurance and hope and joy. Lord, you've given us your word that is strong and true and right. It's not a book of stories that can be changed. It's not fictional characters. God, we know that, that your word has been given for us. We know, God, that when we grow, we bring glory to your kingdom. And we advance your gospel. Teach us each day how to press on toward the goal. Help us, Lord, to seek you in all that we do. When we get distracted, bring us back to you. God, you are good. Remind us of the things to be thankful for. Help us not get distracted by grumbling or complaining or frustration. Those things in the past, but bring us on toward the goal of loving and caring for one another so that we can bring glory to your kingdom. You know each person in this room. You know every bit of their story, and you walk with them. You know each person who is watching us live or in the future. God, we thank you that you know their story. We thank you that you have picked them up and have carried them on, that you will continue to run the race with them. We thank you for your forgiveness and your grace and your love that is far greater than anything in this world. And we ask God for that uncommon joy that comes, that uncommon joy that comes through following you in seasons of difficulty and challenge, at times where we feel isolated and alone and at times where we are surrounded by people, we ask for your grace to cover us. It's in your powerful name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Joy. That was an awesome and encouraging message from the Lord this morning. Thank you for always being open to what he has to bring to us. Thank you. Um, no matter through life's journey, when our heart's breaking, or when we bow our heads in sorrow, who do you want to walk with you? Who do you want to walk along your side? Jesus. Why don't you stand this morning with me as we sing our final hymn, I Want Jesus to Walk With Me. Juliet's 
favorite song. It might not be after this, though. <laughs> On Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me. On a long life pilgrim journey, Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me. trials, Lord, walk with me. In my trials, Lord, won't you walk with me? When my heart is almost breaking, Lord, I want Jesus to walk Friends, if you uh, don't know this Jesus I'm talking about, if you want to know more about this Jesus I'm talking about, if you've got something you want to thank Jesus for, if you have something you want to partner in a battle with you in prayer for, come talk to me. I'll stay up here after for a little bit, and I'd love, love to walk with you. Uh, maybe you want to come to my office and have a longer conversation someday, or sit outside in the beauty of the weather happy to do that too. So reach out. But now, my prayer for you is that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Go in peace, my friends, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. Amen.